record button. Here we go. As an introduction, we'd like to acknowledge that our mission at Vos Library is to advance learning, inspire curiosity, enrich lives, and promote community. With that in mind, let me introduce our guest. Lorraine is a union resident who is, a, is the chair of the town union's age in place committee. She is on the Thompson Community Center Com Committee, the board of directors for Come Spring Food Pantry and works for the Pencrest Community Action Program. Her list of community contributions and involvement include program director for AmeriCorps Senior Program, senior volunteers in food pantries and Knox County Gleaners. And she is a member of the steering committee for the Knox County Food Council. In her spare time, she enjoys photography. <laughs> oh, and I just have to put a little, little piece in here. Uh, she has given me such a warm welcome coming to Union, and I'm so glad that we've connected um, through the library. And I hope that that will be a long-standing relationship. Thank Without you. further ado, please help me welcome Lorraine Francis. Thank Hello, you, Lorraine. <laughs> My fan club. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see familiar uh, names and faces as well as some new people that I don't know. So this is, uh, this is wonderful. I'm really excited about doing this. Let me just adjust my screen here. Um, so um, Deborah, thank you. That was, that was a lovely warm welcome. I really appreciate it. And you know, you're such a good partner in our community. Um, the library is really wonderful. And okay, the sun just came out. <laughs> You know, I kept watching the weather. All right. It's Sorry. actually a good thing, but you know. <laughs> it's worse. Hold on, wait a minute. Oh. Okay. So, so the, the, the long and the short of the, the uh, new uh, shade here is we have come spring food pantry meetings at four and I realized that I kept moving and I was moving completely out of the screen because you know the sun kept coming in so finally thought I gotta have a screen but it's been so dark and rainy that I didn't think I needed so anyways thank you for the lovely introduction and and uh, you know the you partner with us both um, with the food pantry, with our, our blue barrels that sit there for uh, collecting food when people come and drop their books off or pick them up. And um, also with the Aging in Place Committee, which is just really important in our community and looking out for our seniors. And, and, um, and I, Anita's on from that committee and Bill, I really appreciate it. And uh, we have another board member, uh, Jane Jacobs is on um with us too so she's from our our board that comes spring so um so we have lots of moving parts to talk about i kind of divided my talk into um different areas um starting with um this the state of maine uh what happens in knox county and then union because there are a lot of different um areas is and people working on food insecurity so i thought i'd touch on all of them so um so let's get started so one of the common questions that comes up, yes, this is my, thank you. <laughs> one of um, the common questions that comes up is, um, is it food security or food insecurity? And um, so the, the term that we commonly use is food insecurity, as in you're insecure as to where your food is coming from. Um, food insecurity is defined by the USDA as lack of a consistent access to enough food for a healthy, active lifestyle. Um, Good Shepherd Food Bank sometimes uses the term low food security when they write things. So they are a little bit interchangeable, but um, food insecurity is common, commonly used. So a couple of the other buzzwords that we you will hear a lot are stigma, equity, and dignity. And um, at Come Spring uh, Food Pantry, we just redid our mission. And um, it's feeding our neighbors with dignity while promoting health, opportunity, and hope. And um, you know, we want all positive images and words around um, the use of the food pantries. It's it's really important that we do that. And and the stigma and the dignity are are truly at our hearts with everything that we do. So who goes to food pantries? Well, it's the working poor, um, single moms and dads seniors, the disabled, 
off-season workers, veterans, and our neighbors. Um, we, we see everyone that comes to the food pantries and um, everyone um, we hope leaves with um, a good food and, um, and feel like they've been treated really well by them, by our, our food pantry volunteers. Um, in Maine, 13.5% of the population goes to food pantries. That's a pretty staggering number when you, when you think about it, 13.5% of our population. So we're gonna start in Maine. Um, as to what statewide is happening. And I'm sure you've all heard of Good Shepherd Food Bank. Um, they are a food bank, not a food pantry. They supply food to food pantries and communities. So I took a great quote off of their um, website. And um, it's, we believe no one in Maine should go hungry. And we believe there is a solution to the problem of, of hunger in Maine. For every person who is currently in need, there are even more Mainers willing and able to reach out with a helping hand. And that's a, just a great statement. And, and it really speaks to, um, I think, to Mainers and, and to our community and, and people that do want to help. So, um, so I like that. I thought that was a great, great way to start off. So in Maine, approximately 85,000 Mainers are estimated to experience very low food insecurity or food security. Um, in 2021, Maine has the sixth highest rate of low food security in the country. So that's a pretty staggering um, statement. We are the sixth highest rate of low food security in the country. So um, you may have um, heard in the, uh, there's a bill in the legislature, it's called Ending Hunger in Maine by 2030. Um, we'd like to think that this is gonna put food pantries out of service, but it's not. It will change the way we distribute food. And um, what it really means is to give accessibility to everyone so that they can get food. And um, so it's something that's being worked on. It's a, it's a, great, um, it's a great bill. I happened to be at the State House when they did the, um, the initial reading of it. And um, it, it, was very, uh, it was very moving, very moving, the people that spoke out um, about it. And um, they, the group that they put together comes from all different areas of um, the community and the food system uh, to bring them together to figure out how we can end um, food insecurity. So um, in Knox County, um, we have a food system and that's one of, the, one of the new buzzwords is what is your food system? And um, there's several parts about that and I, I'm involved in most of them one way or the other. So, um, so I thought I would kind of talk about that a little bit. So um, our first is the Knox County Food Council and, and I'm on the steering committee for that. And it's a really important part of, um, of what we do and how we look at things in Knox County and um, make sure that people are getting fed and, um, and then some other parts around it. So the mission of the Knox County Food Council is Knox County partners advocating for a community-based healthy food system for all. And the vision is, is that the Knox County Food Council will become the leader in creating a collaborative food system in order to advance a resilient and sustainable network, assuring healthy access to resources for all our communities. So um, in the process of doing that, um, they create a food charter and this is something that's done and I'm seeing light here again, um, a, a, a charter that's um, being done across the country. These, the food counselors are doing this and um, everyone is tailoring it to their own, um, their own communities and what's important. So in Knox County, um, basically the, it's the, we commit to support and the items are health and wellness, um, assuring affordable and safe, healthy food is an essential building block. We commit to education, um, a relationship between the food and our environment, um, initiatives that develop food literacy and hands-on skills, and by fostering the next generation of caretakers for our food system. We commit to sustainable economic development by supporting the local food system that supports uh, sustainable farming, processing, and the distribution of food, aligning local agencies, creating community infrastructure, 
and promoting our region as an agricultural and culinary destination, which is huge. Um, you know, that's um, Union is a is a great food producer, and between our wineries and our brewery and the farms that we have here, um, we truly are a, a breadbasket in in Maine. Um, they commit to social justice, uh, reaffirming safe, healthy, affordable food and clean water as a basic human right, promoting environmental policies that support healthy food um, within community infrastructure of income, housing, healthcare, education, employment, and transportation, and fostering food self-reliance through community programs. Uh, environmental health, protecting and preserving farmland and marine sources excuse me, marine resources for local food production, um, looking at waste and conserving energy uh, for minimal impact on the natural environment. And the final is commit to support culture, celebrating and promoting respect for traditional, cultural, and spiritual food diversity, promote the dignity and responsibility of growing, preparing, and enjoying food, and connecting our rich agricultural and maritime heritage to our contemporary food practices. So um, I know it's a lot, it's a mouthful, but it's really important, um, you know, that that um, we, I guess, put a stake in the sand that, um, that you know, food is an important part of Knox County and, um, and how we want to look at it. So who's involved? Pantries, farms, farmers, the soup kitchens, gleaners, restaurants, producers, um, meet once a month on Zoom. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different subjects that we have tackled, are tackling and uh, would like to in the future. So um, it's a it's a pretty exciting, um, pretty exciting time. And, and uh, food in Maine is huge. There's was a just a food convergence with different tracks that, um, that uh, many, many hundreds of people um, Attended and um, you know talked about a lot of these things. I was on a I was on a um, a food insecurity track. Um, Bill Lombardi, who's on, he was on one for farmers. So it was we got a great diversity of people. So um, let's see. Let's change that slide up a little bit here. Let's. What do we got next? Um, this is um, actually a slide that um, a picture that I took. We were distributing, redistributing food. And this is something that the Food Council, um, you know, talks about is getting food out to um, a lot of different people in the masses. And this was a, a USDA drop um, that we orchestrated. And each of the food pantries came and picked up um, their food. And um, that some of you may recognize the gentleman with the case there, that's my husband, Michael Leonard, um, who was helping that day. And uh, that's at the Warren, the old brick school in Warren. Um, and they were a great host to have us there. So let's see, what's on the next slide, I think is about Knox County Gleaners. Yes, okay, so Knox County Gleaners, this is just an amazing organization that I'm so, I'm so proud of um, the way it came about. And um, this is our, our banner here, 19,208 pounds gleaned, and that went into 18 different locations. So if you don't know about gleaners, gleaners are um, people that um, it's biblical, go into the fields um, after the farmers have harvested and they, um, they glean what is left in the field and take that and distribute it to people um, in need of food. And um, gleaning in Maine is huge. Uh, through Penquist, we were fortunate enough to get a grant from the Harvard Pilgrim Foundation for um, forming a gleaning organization. And um, through that, which is very exciting, uh, we were able to, um, to form the organization, Knox County Gleaners, and then, and then do some really exciting things. So um, the, I wanna go back to the 18 locations that we um, actually distributed to. So our, our mission with um, the gleaners is more fresh food into more people's hands. And, um, so we distributed to food pantries, uh, the 10 food pantries in Knox County, senior living locations, one in Camden and, um, and one in Thomaston, the Knox Clinic in Rockland, Sussman House, part of Penn Bay, uh, Maine Behavioral Health, their group homes um, where they cook every day. And there was a lot more small places here and there where we were able to put out share tables. Um, 
being able to hand someone a fresh picked head of lettuce instead of a bag with markdown stickers not only provides more nutrition and a healthy locally grown vegetable, but it decreases stigma and increases the dignity of the recipient. And that that's a quote I was able to um, share in a um, in a talk with with Susan Collins um, back about well it's about a year ago now and um, it was just it was very exciting to be able to talk about what we do Knox County Gleaners on a on a um, on not only a state but um, a national level and um, you know think about that being able to take that fresh head of lettuce and take it home and being able to make a salad and feed your family with it versus um, sometimes which happens in food pantries is getting that food that has markdown stickers on it and you're not sure how long that um, bag of lettuce is going to last. It's not something we like to do, but it happens. Um, so that fresh head of lettuce in your hand that you can feed is really exciting. So that's what we do with Knox County Gleaners. And um, we can pick, go flip the slide here. There's a couple of pictures here of some of the fun things that, that we do. So, um, oh yeah, here we go. So um, this is actually myself and um, Nancy Wood. Nancy Wood is the um, SNAP educator in, um, in Knox County. And uh, she is my gleaner in chief. Um, she's out doing, um, doing gleans, scheduling gleans. I'm the paper pusher, unfortunately. I do get out once in a while. But um, this was a picture that was taken um, we were at the ferry terminal and the reason it was taken here is we had just gotten a grant from United Midcoast Charities to um, get more fresh food to the islands. Um, sometimes our islands are uh, forgotten in, in the food system and there's a lot of hungry people out there. And so um, we worked on a program to get more fresh food out to them. And um, it's now a program working through AIO in Rockland to um, where we can pack vegetables and other and other groceries, and it can go on any trip that the ferry is um, when it leaves the terminal in Rockland to Vinyl Haven, North Haven, I actually Islesboro also, um, which is huge because before it was how do we get it over? Somebody has to pay for it. I was meeting cars in the ferry terminal parking lot, you know, at at um, 6 a.m. to put a box of vegetables in their car so that they could drive it over and um, like I said through in conjunction with AIO we were able to set that up so that's really exciting so this was a fun picture that we took there for a little publicity the other picture is uh, again Nancy I'm always the photographer so I'm behind all these pictures um, this was um, Erickson Fields we had just finished gleaning um, I think it was 20 oh man how many 2800 pounds of squash and um, we were storing it in our root cellar, which is very exciting. Um, it's not an old fashioned root cellar. It's a root cellar that um, is a, actually a refrigerated shipping container with what we call a cool bot system in it. It's kind of like a air conditioner that keeps it consistently at the same temperature. And um, it turns out that 38 degrees is uh, perfect for most vegetables, including squash. Um, we stored all the squash in our root cellar at AIO um, actually through December. And it was like it was just picked. It's amazing. And um, so this was exciting. So all through the holidays, we were able to um, hand out you know, squash that was grown locally. Um, we also had carrots. The best carrots you've ever eaten um, came from Erickson Fields. And uh, they stored beautifully in the, in the root cellar also. So that was fun. I think I, I have lots of gleaning pictures. Um, what do we got next? So this was our um, our first inaugural glean that we did. And um, it was the 4th of July. Um, this was actually in 2019. And uh, we got a call from um, Dooryard uh, Farms over in Camden. And they had lettuce that they were going to pull up and compost if we couldn't pick it. And we had to be there on 4th of July. So um, we got this crew of people together, anybody who would join us. And uh, again, there's Michael, my husband in this picture and, and uh, Nancy, and I don't know, there may be other people you recognize there. Um, and um, we were there at seven o'clock in the morning because it was gonna be a 90 degree day. And um, we, we picked lettuce, this is in the back of uh, Michael's truck. And um, we did, um, 
let's see, we did 12 um, banana boxes of lettuce. And if you think of a banana box and stuffing that with lettuce um, and um, we all washed, all cleaned, ready to go to the food pantries. We got to, to AIO with it and it was 4th of July. Where were we gonna store it? And so we ended up, this was before AIO did their new, new building they had a crawl space underneath the building and we ended up putting it under there to store it till we could distribute it the next day, which actually was our first venture at a root cellar. Um, but that was, that's what really um, pushed us to understanding that we needed to have a root cellar because we don't know when we're gonna get these calls to do gleaning and when we're gonna go out into the field. So, um, so that was that picture. That was just a really fun, our fun first glean on the 4th of July. Um, this is at Erickson Fields, um, helping to, uh, to glean potatoes. And of course, Nancy's in the picture, I'm taking it. Um, but it was really fun. This is, uh, Erickson Fields has a teen ag program. And um, so these are all, um, some of them are Camden Hill students. Some are um, actually their interns for the summer. And, um, and so we love working with them. They're, they're just, they're great partners for us. This ended up being the, um, the Penquist sends Thanksgiving cards out to um, a lot of their supporters and, and um, funders and whatever. And this turned out to be in, in 2019, this was the, the card that went out was this picture. So we were very excited to have, to have, that, um, to have that used. So um, the next, I think that was, is at the end of the gleaning? Oh no, this one, this is my favorite. So um, this is in Union. And um, we got a call from a gentleman who um, has a blueberry field. Um, it's out on Seidlinger Road, and, and uh, which I'm sure many of you know. And um, he had just acquired it um, through a, a relative that had passed away. It's full of rocks. I mean, huge rocks, but it's a gorgeous. In fact, this background that behind me is part of that field. Um, and he said, you know, if you want to go out and glean, you know, and give it to the food pantries or soup kitchens or whatever, you know, go on out. So, um, so we did. And um, so um, we, Michael, who had raked blueberries when he was a kid, he, uh, he went out and taught the rest of the crew how to, how to rake blueberries. And uh, we raked 70 pounds of blueberries, which we winnowed at Coastal Blueberry. They very nicely let us do that. And uh, we froze it and we did distribute it to uh, mostly to soup the soup kitchen and places that were cooking. Because as we all know here in Union, the blueberries are very fragile and to keep them to hand out to people is difficult. So we felt the best use of them was for people to bake with them and make blueberry cake and blueberry pie and whatever. So that's what we did. So this was just a really fun day. And, and um, I think we'll probably be out there again. Um, with the with raking blueberries we actually own rakes which is really fun um the little one that i'm holding um is one that that they're great for around rocks um michael is holding a big one because that's what he raked with when he was a kid so um so we did a lot of teaching and, and fun stuff that day so that's that one so i think is that the end of my gleaning okay yeah so um so that's knox county gleaners and, um, and storage facility. Um, storage is a huge, huge part of what we do um, and the need for, for um, storing food that we can redistribute safely and, and quickly. So, um, so we're glad to have it at AIO. Um, Mainers Feeding Mainers, I talked a little bit about that. That's a program of Good Shepherd. Um, Erickson Fields is our main um, our main Mainers Feeding Mainers location, but Bill Lombardi at Sandy D. Felici Farm here in Union also is a Mainers Feeding Mainers farm. And um, we're very excited to work with him and he distributes to, um, to Union Warren and Washington Food Pantries. So again, it's just getting more fresh food into more, more people's hands. Um, so before I get to Union, there was one other program I wanted to mention, and that's our Building um, Leadership Advocates Program. And I was lucky enough to, to be asked to be a mentor on this program. And it's a, it's a program of Good Shepherd and AIO. Um, and it's, it's basically um, the voice of the recipient and um, lived experience with food pantries. And what... Um, and what it was about was taking um, some very brave um, young 
young mothers and 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 a, and a gentleman, a veteran, um, and bringing them together to teach them how to advocate for themselves and how to advocate for um, for the food pantries and um, the the dignity, the stigma, and some of those other things that go along with it. And um, their stories were amazing, and they actually have changed the way we operate in food pantries today and including our food pantry and union. Um, and I'll talk about that when we, get, when we get over to the union side. But you know, when, when, um, when we're working with all the pantries, it's just really important that we listen to our recipients, the people that are coming to the pantries and you know, what they're telling us, what they need, you know, how they feel, um, you know, what's going on. Um, I, I can say very proudly that um, in our food pantry, Tracy, who's our pantry manager, she knows everyone that comes. She can call them by name. She talks to them. She knows their family. She knows what food they eat. And that's just a really, really important part of the whole food pantry um, experience. So um, basically it's listening to people and, and um, you know, being in their shoes, how do they, how do they feel about it? So in, um, in, the, in Knox County, um, our food pantries, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and in kind of food pantries in general. Um, the statistic for um, food insecurity is um, the Good Shepherd estimates uh, that there are 4,890 people that are food insecure residents. Um, that's 12.3% of the population. Um, children, there is 20% um, in 2020, which is up from 11% in 2019. So um, that's a trend we, we don't like. We don't like those numbers. Um, but what's even more interesting is in Knox County, um, we estimate we feed 2,067 individuals. And um, that's an unduplicated number at least once a month. Um, this is up from pre-COVID times when our number was about 1,500 people. What it says is we're not reaching everyone. And, um, and that's a very, that's a, that's a tough statistic because we really, we want to be visible, we want to be out, we want to be reaching people. So um, that's something that we work very, very hard on. Um, all our pantries do. And uh, they're being very innovative and, and um, just um, looking for ways to make sure that they're reaching people in their, in their community. Um, so where does the food come from? You know, this is a question that we get asked a lot is, so where, you know, where do you get your food? And, you know, is it all donations or whatever? Um, food comes from, from a couple different sources. The big one um, from the USDA is called TFAP, and that's um, the Emergency Food Assistance Program. And that's been around for many, many years. It started the T being temporary, um, which became that it was just always going to be there, and, and they changed it to the. And that's, um, that's the canned goods. That's the... Um, you know, the basic stuff that comes in. Um, it's a lot of beans, <laughs> dried beans, regular beans. Um, there's spaghetti sauce, there's um, um, some cans of fruits and whatever. And then there's there's meat, which is, um, the meat is just, is, is a good thing. I'm trying to get out of that stripe of, <laughs> of um, let, me, let me go this way. Um, it's, it's, um, it's for many pantries, including Union, it's a, it's a lifeline to be able to give our, uh, our recipients meet. Um, this week there was pork patties, sometimes it's sausage pork patties, sometimes it's chicken patties, um, huge chicken tenderloin breasts. Um, there was chicken, our turkeys, um, there was chicken thighs and legs um, available. There's, there's bacon, we were able to get bacon um, this last time, which is wonderful. So there's some really good nutritious food that comes along with the rice and the beans and, and whatever. Um, through Good Shepherd Food Bank, they have a system where we can go in and buy food. Um, they, some of it's free, um, but we can also buy it. And um, it's, it varies. Right now, it's 16 cents a pound that we pay for it. And basically, that pays for the transportation to get the food to us. It doesn't pay. The food is, is um, ours. Some people pick it up to save that money. Um, for, for most pantries, it's worth paying 16 cents a pound to get it. Um, so those are the two programs that we have on the big level. Um, on a smaller level, it's local donations. It's um, both financial support 
and um, and food that's dropped at the library, which is you know which is wonderful. And and most of that food that we get um, through food drives and whatever, um, unless it's specific, which we do with the church and union, where we've asked for some specific things, the Methodist Church. Um, we put out as a, um, as a take one or take two, depending on how much we have, because it gives people a choice, which is really nice. Um, so the, um, some of the things that, that we look for um, specifically in, for people to donate, um, and this is one of the things we do with uh, People's United Methodist, is dish and laundry soap, um, toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenex. Those are things that the food pantries have to buy, but yet they're a real basic necessity for people. So, um, so that saves the food pantries money so that they can purchase maybe other things. And, um, and it's something that is, can, it can go on our shelf and then, and then be distributed. Um, couple, couple other things, cooking oil, coffee, um, black tea, um, you know, it's specific things like in, during the holidays that we like, we like, like stovetop stuffing at Thanksgiving time or, or cranberry sauce or whatever. So we always have kind of an ongoing list of, of items, we, spices, um, you know, that we take. So, it, you know, it helps fill in where Good Shepherd doesn't have that sort of things, um, you know, that we don't have to go out and shop for them. So, um, just a couple more things about the Knox County. We have 10 food pantries. Um, in, in Knox and um, we have one soup kitchen um, at this point um, at, at St. Bernard's and St. Bernard's serves, right now they're serving about 50, 40 to 50 people a day um, there. And they're also, they get our gleaned vegetables. Um, and um, that's down, they were up to close to 90 people. But with COVID, you know, people are afraid to come out. Um, and um, they've got it now. They, they were outside serving meals, and, um, but now they have been able to move inside with a system so that they can safely distance, um, but they're all takeout. And the, the really hard thing there is um, that soup kitchen in there many, many, many times, and um, you get to know the people that come in and, you know, they sit together. This is, this is part of their socialization, you know, that are isolated. They come in, they sit, they chat, they check in when, when there's something wrong with somebody, they know it. Um, they can let somebody know that somebody hasn't been here for a week. I wonder what's going on. And um, with COVID, that's been really difficult that they haven't been able to, um, you know, to have that sort of um, um, interaction with people but they continue to serve meals right through all of that. Um, just as a note, all our volunteers at our Knox County food pantries um, are volunteer, um, except for AIO, they have some people that do um, warehousing and, and an executive director and whatever that are paid staff, but all of the other pantries, our smaller pantries are all, all volunteers. So um, let's see. Let's talk a little bit about COVID because um, that's a that's a big hot issue in food pantries, of course, just like everything else. And um, it's been a it's been a, a difficult year. There's been silver linings. We've learned a lot uh, from it, um, but you know, throughout it all, everybody was um, guided by the CDC guidelines. There are specific guidelines for food pantries. Um, there were no recipients allowed in food pantries, only volunteers, safe distanced, um, you know, wearing masks. Everyone was so good about it and, and had to scramble to set up how they were going to distribute food because it isn't something that you could just say, oh, when COVID's over, we'll open up again. They needed to keep distributing food. So um, we started a um, the first week, a, um, a weekly phone call with all the food pantries, and I facilitated that, and we all got to know each other, um, all the food pantries. I knew them all, but we kind of brought them all together. 
And um, it's been amazing. Um, they supported each other. Everybody talked about their different, how they were going to do things so that other people could learn from it. Um, we, we reported out how things were going. Did you have enough volunteers? Um, you know, how many people are your numbers up? Or are they down? All of that. So that every week, everybody could kind of judge as to, as to where they were in this. Um, we're extremely proud that um, throughout the whole so far, um, none of our volunteers had to shut down because of COVID. Um, there were no outbreaks. And the really heartwarming thing was, is we had a really frank discussion at one point in time about what's going to happen if one of the food pantries, um, you know, has an outbreak. How are we going to handle this? And um, among themselves, um, decided on a mutual aid system that if someone, one of the pantries, so for example, if come spring had an outbreak, um, they would step in, you know, get, put the call out and they'd figure out how to do it. Whether it was, um, could we send people to Camden? Could we send people to Warren? Could volunteers come in from the different pantries, you know, do a complete cleaning and take over for that day? And and um, it was it was very heartwarming to see everybody just wanted to make sure that everybody was safe and that food got out to people. Um, and the understanding that, um, you know, not everybody, you know, people in union, maybe they could drive to Camden, but maybe they can't. So, you know, we need to keep our pantries intact. And that's, you know, certainly for all the communities. So, um, so that was really our, for the food pantries, that was really the silver lining. It was all the food pantries coming together, um, you know, learning from each other. We now are, we now meet every month. We've gone to that. And, um, you know, out of that, you know, the sharing of food happened. Um, the Salvation Army, who is a, is a huge part of our food system, they drove every, um, it was like every 10 days to um, Auburn, to Good Shepherd Food Pantry, and brought back a truckload of vegetables, a box truck full of vegetables that they shared with all the food pantries um, in Knox County so that they would have fresh food. They would have those fresh vegetables. And um, so, and then they, they have a fresh rescue room where, where you can go every day and get fresh food there. So that, you know, it was just, it was just those really cool things about, you know, what we did and how we all pulled together that was really, um, really, really exciting. Um, so let's see, a couple other things. I'm hearing a lot in the news about food waste and how Hannaford has just come out and said, you know, we aren't, um, we waste no food. And um, the food pantries are a big part of that. Um, Hannaford Shaw's, our local markets, that um, food that is, um, I hate to use the word salvageable, but food that can be redistributed comes to the food pantries first. Um, what the food pantries then, um, it, it, a lot of it goes to feeding animals. So it's staying out of the, the uh, waste stream, which is wonderful. And that's what Hannaford and Shaw's are actually doing too. Um, there, you know, when, when we get a lot of the meat comes um, to us that way from, um, from Hannaford and Shaw's, they pull it off like two days before the last sell date. It gets, you know, frozen and then it's um, sent to the food pantry. So that works out really well. Here in, in Union, um, we were able to get food from um, the, um, the market in Warren um, and that has worked out extremely well for us um, there. Um, you know, you might hear about people standing in long lines, um, you know, getting food, you know, nationally, we don't have that problem in Maine, we have plenty of food, there's a lot of food in the pipeline, you know, nobody needs to stand in line for hours, which is, which is really great. Um, let's see. So um, one of the new trends in, um, in food pantries, because, you know, we, we do have our trends and, and um, that we're working on, it's called client choice. And the um, and that's being able to have somebody come into a food pantry after COVID, and actually shop like they would in a small store, and where one of our volunteers would shop along with them, help them make um, healthy choices, and um, and they can choose what they want as opposed to right now. What's happening is the volunteers pack bags on Tuesday. The um, pantry opens on Wednesday morning. They drive up to the um, to the in union. Drive up to the table. Volunteers there to talk with them. They load the stuff in their car and take it home. Um, 
we're finding that they're bringing food back to us because they're they're getting too much of the same thing, which is what's in the pipeline. And maybe they don't eat it or maybe they're uh, gluten free and it's got gluten in it and they can't eat it. So they're returning the food. So um, when we can go to the client choice model, it's going to be amazing because it just changes the whole atmosphere of the pantry. Um, people being able to choose, you can get to know them and what they like and, and whatever. So, um, you know, that's the, that again, is part of that um, stigma and dignity and giving people that, that opportunity to choose what they want. Um, we're commonly calling that pantry fatigue. And um, it's, it's a big hot topic, believe me, of every one of my, the meetings that we do with all the food pantries. Um, we are doing some creative things, which is really fun. Um, you know, handing out recipes has always been a standard in the food pantries. Um, now what we're trying to do is put together meals. So um, what you don't want to do is hand somebody a box of pasta and have no way for them to create a meal with it. So if a, a box of pasta goes out, it should have, a, a, you know, at least a can of tomatoes and a can of um, the spaghetti sauce or the, the tomato sauce. And hopefully there's some ground beef so that they could make a, a, a pasta sauce and have it, you know, with that box. Um, that looking, we for a couple weeks ago we had uh, we had gotten for, through Good Shepherd. It was um, taco shells and taco making, so um, that went out with ground beef, so that people could have you know have a taco night. Um, spices, that's a huge thing. We keep trying. Um, we, we every once in a while we have a spice fairy um, that goes out and buys you know um, you know fifteen or twenty Italian seasoning, um, garlic garlic powder. Um, chili powder, onion powder, things like that, because that's stuff that if you, you know, you're on a limited budget, are you going to spend the money on getting, on getting spices? Rennie's 99 cents, you know, Walmart dollar, you know, whatever. And they work just great, but that's a nice thing to be able to donate and for us to be able to give to people. They always fly off the shelf. Um, and in Union, we do birthday cakes um, where we, we hand out cake mixes and frosting. Um, specifically if somebody has, we know they have a birthday, they may get two in their, in their package, but, um, every, you know, like every couple months we make sure everybody gets a cake and, and frosting, um, down at AIO, there's a group of, um, I think they're Girl Scouts that are put together party packages. So there it's, it's like a birthday party package. So there's some balloons in it and some things that, um, um, you know, there might be, you know, um, party hats, um, confetti, whatever, so that um, people can have, you know, a, a birthday party along with that. Um, at Valentine's Day and here in Union, um, we put in a kind of generic uh, Valentine card and a box of the dollar boxes of chocolate, which was really fun. People were very, very pleased with that. They thought that was really fun to be able to open the bags and find that. Um, and a new trend is, um, is cooking, uh, cooking for community and um, what we're calling ready to heat and eat meals. There's a program, um, it was actually being done through uh, Cafe Miranda and um, where they were, they're cooking meals, they're still doing it. They go to AIO and people can take home a meal for each person that they can actually eat. And that's something that um, when we're in our new pantry, um, that we're going to be able to do. We've had people already approach us and say, we want to cook. We want to be able to do these meals for you. So, um, so that's some of the kind of the trends and things that are, are, um, are happening. Um, so in union, so let's flip the slide here. We can see some of the volunteers. So um, the, this is our kind of our core team of volunteers and, and um, we have uh, the gentleman on the end is, is Joe Marble. He's been with the pantry for, Oh my word, I think, I, I wanna say almost 15 years. Um, that's Deb and Deb has been with us about a year. Tracy um, with the white mask there in the center, she's um, our pantry manager. She worked with Carol Wattier when Carol was the, the manager there and she learned the ropes. And uh, when Carol left, she took over. And um, Sarah Drickey, who's, um, is uh, she's been about a little over a year and a half, I think has been with us and just very, very um, excited to have her. She's our vegetable lady. She sorts all the vegetables and hands them out. 
And um, so that's the core team. We have some other people that kind of come in and when needed um, and, a, and a whole lot of other volunteers that are helping us at the pantry, but this is the pantry core. Um, let's see, there's another picture here. I think, I don't know what we're doing. Um, so this is the bags. Um, so all those bags have been pre-packed with the groceries that'll be handed out um, the next day. And as you can see, there's juice there. This, this time we had um, some shampoo down in the corner. Um, we get personal care products from a, a nonprofit in Rockland called One Less Worry, um, which is wonderful. Um, we, we get toilet paper. Um, we still always need toilet paper. We never seem to have enough. Um, there's onions, there's eggs that we buy from the common market. Um, bananas we get from the common market and other things. And so those are ready to take out and, and, um, and hand out to people. Since this picture is taken, we've been able to acquire some rolling racks. Um, they're tall shelves with wheels on the end. So they're much easier to, to move around. But that was, um, that was during early in COVID days. So I think there's one more and I think that's, yeah. So that's um, Joe and Tracy in their kind of very staunch um, picture, but that's, that's what the food pantry looks like inside um, right now. And um, what you're seeing is most of the food pantry. Um, the pantry is very small. That's one of our challenges. We, um, are, we don't have room uh, for all this, the um, cases of food that come in. We have been fortunate that we've been able to get a second room. Um, since COVID next door, and that has eased things up hugely um, for all the, for the volunteers to be able to work, social distance, and have room so that um, they can, they can pack the bags. Um, and um, so this is a start of a line for, for packing bags. As you can see, there's a lot of soup um, on the shelf there, and pumpkin, and the back wall is uh, beans, and, um, and then there's canned vegetables. Um, tons of raisins. We had nuts. We've had all kinds of really good things, diced tomatoes um, and cans. So that's, um, that's what the pantry looks like inside. So um, pre-COVID, we served um, 30 on an average of 30 families, which was between 90 and 110 individuals. Um, COVID numbers are all over the place, um, up, down, uh, many highs and lows. Um, food fatigue, stimulus checks, SNAP benefits, unemployment has all just played with numbers so that all our pantries are all over the place with, um, with the numbers that they're serving. Um, so the report today was we had 16 families that came. So that was, that's, that's probably the average is about half of where we were. Um, our challenge right now where we are is, um, is space. Um, our parking lot is very difficult to navigate this winter. It was really hard um, at the Thompson Community Center. And um, the big thing is, is we had no visibility. Um, so many people did not know that there was a food pantry in Union. Um, they didn't know where we were. Um, we were very hidden, um, not a lot of outreach. So um, our future looks much brighter. And uh, we're very excited about it, um, as I'm sure you've, you have heard. Um, we have purchased the property at 27 Cam or Common Road, and, um, and we're, we're starting that process. And, you know, one of the big things when we went and looked at the space, um, that Bill and I went and looked at it together, was the visibility. And, um, you know, that's just huge that, you know, that number I gave you before where, where there was so many people, only half of the people are being served that Good Shepherd feels are food insecure. And in Union, um, one of our um, building leadership advocates, um, gentleman, he's a veteran, he, he was living um, in Union in a garage in a tent all winter long. Um, he was hungry most of the time. Um, he tried to hitchhike to, um, to AIO in Rockland for food at least once a month um, with what he could get and carry back again. And here we had a food pantry at the Thompson Center that he actually probably hitchhiked by and he didn't know that we were there. And, you know, to me, that's heartbreaking. I mean, you know, and how many, and I actually, I have, I have three stories like that. Um, you know, where people here that didn't know that there was a food pantry. And, you know, so when I say, you know, that leadership program, um, the advocates, you know, changed policy, 
that that has been always a driving factor in the fact that we are in the wrong place with the come spring food pantry and need to be out and be more visible so you know that 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 lower number of people that we're serving um i'm hoping we can we can double from 30 families to 60 families that we're serving in our new pantry because people will know that we're there we have good food we are, we're um, accessible and and um and friendly and, and we want people to come in and see us so um the pantry itself the when i walked in um, what I said was, if I had to design a food pantry, this is what it would look like, which is why um, the building was perfect for it. The location, of course, but the building, the front space is, is big, it's open, um, it has a beautiful blue floor in it, it's about the color of the sky behind me and Bill, <laughs> both of us, and um, it's got an area where we can have a nice waiting area, we're going to have tables and chairs where people can sit and talk private areas for people to be able to um, have a, a quiet conversation with one of our volunteers to get signed up um, or or just talk. Um, the pantry itself will be client choice so that people can come in and shop. And um, the, uh, the second room back offers all kinds of storage for us, um, both cold and, and dry storage um, we'll have back there. There's a little um, kind of vestibule area, um, a classroom where we're going to be able to have meetings. We're going to be able to teach. We're going to be able to uh, serve meals. And then in the in the last room back, um, it'll be a commercial kitchen. And um, that has been um, um, funded primarily from um, the Harvard Pilgrim Foundation um, through Knox County Gleaners, because that's one of the trends is in gleaning is to um, to be able to prepare foods and process foods. And so that's, we'll be doing that in the kitchen. And then of course the pantry will be able to use that. So um, right now we're in the raise the roof phase of, um, uh, of our, our fundraising. We need to put a roof on the building. Um, and then once we do that, we're full speed ahead to be able to work on the kitchen and, and start to uh, some of the other projects to get the pantry moved in there. So very, very excited about that and about our plans. Um, the the uh, farmer's market is, is joining us. They'll be there Fridays from three to six. Um, we're very excited about creating that little food hub there. And um, so we're looking at an, a future that's all good, uh, positive, friendly, inclusive, equitable, increasing dignity, no stigma, we're fighting isolation, and um, we'll be promoting healthy and nutritious foods. So um, <laughs> in a nutshell, uh, that's what's happening in food insecurity in, in um, the state, in the county, and, and here in Union. If anyone you know wants to read more about food insecurity, I would suggest going to the Good Shepherd um, Food Bank website. Um, there's two sections. One is called Hunger in Maine and the other is Latest News. And there's all kinds of wonderful information about there, about food insecurity there. So we have time for a couple questions anyways. <laughs> Thank you, Lorraine. Yes, we have about five minutes. I yeah. don't see any in the chat, but if people want to unmute well, and unmute ask and questions. Ask me questions. I love questions. <laughs> Somebody must have a question. <laughs> Hey, I have a question. Hi, Josh. Hey, uh, hi there. Um, what would you say are, are the main drivers of, of food insecurity in Knox County? Um, I imagine, you know, due to COVID, it was, part of it was probably unemployment, but are, are there other major factors that, that you've seen? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would, we see, well, a couple things. Um, the working poor, um, people that are working, but um, can't you know can't afford um food insurance a car because you have to drive in union to get everywhere um you know and it's just one more it's it's just that little bit extra to help them get through you know get through the month and and we encourage that um because if if we can provide them basic foods that they don't have to go to a grocery store and buy they can then take that extra money make sure their car is running so that they can get to work and um, pay the insurance and pay their heating bills. So um, that's I, I, that's a big part of it. But you know, we see we see everything. We see you know um, seniors. I honestly, I'm a little worried. We haven't seen as many seniors 
um, through COVID. And, um, you know, we're, we've been trying to reach out to some of them to make sure that we're, um, we're able to um, make sure that they have food. You know, that's a, that's a real concern about it. But, um, you know, it's kind of that list that I, I went through. We see, you know, a little bit of everybody. But um, the unemployment has been a factor during COVID, um, you know, both up and down the stimulus checks and, um, um, you know, unemployment benefits and SNAP benefits. If, if people have the choice and can go to a grocery store and buy some things, they will go and buy those things and then come to us for the basics. So I hope that answers your question. It did, thank you. Thank yeah. you, There's a, there are a couple questions. Yeah. Um, Samantha's asking, is there a day or time to donate items to the Come Spring Food Pantry? So, um, so the best thing is take them to the library. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if you're a if you're a regular library, so um, whenever they're open, our our blue barrels are there. There's two of them, and uh, you can you can take them anytime there. Um, right now, um, we're taking them at the pantry on the um, second and fourth Wednesdays between ten and twelve, which is you know when we're open. When we move to the new pantry, we may, you know, have some other um, other ways of of um, of donating. But um, the library is just such a great partner for us because you're open the hours and it's easy to just drop by and and uh, donate food. So and thank you, thank We're you. Happy to do that. Um, Doug is asking. <clears throat> interesting connection. Have the public schools been able to continue free and reduced lunches during COVID? Will the schools be providing breakfast and lunch during the summer break? <clears throat> um, I that's not a, my exact area of expertise. <laughs> although we do talk about it a lot, especially with the food council, um, there are com ongoing conversations. I will say every day about how that's going to work. Um, you know, this this year. Um, there's, um, as opposed to when COVID started, right now there's there's money that has been designated. In fact, I was on a call with emergency management today, money that has been designated for the lunches. And um, and actually they're looking at providing um, free lunches um, for everyone in schools. Um, and I, I'm not sure it's gonna be this next school year. I think it'll be partial and then by the whatever 2023, that will be free lunches for everyone. So um, there's a lot of talk around it. It's getting a lot of attention. And um, I think you'll see some stuff coming out pretty soon on it. Great idea. Yeah. Yep. Anyone, anyone else? I don't see any others in the chat. No. Anybody want to unmute before we end for tonight? <clears throat> no. This All has right. been great. Uh, you know, people on board, our board, um, Bill and Jane from um, our board, Eric, um, who's our architect. Um, of course, Anita is our aging in place. Um, so it's great to have people on. I love spreading the word and and um, about what's happening and food insecurity and the great work that all our pantries are doing. And and uh, and I invite you to you know to to look at Come Spring, follow us uh, on Facebook. We've got some great things going on, and come to the farmers market. Excellent, Lorraine. This has been so educational. Great overview about all the hard work everybody's doing. And thank you for the leadership and all of that. You're welcome. <clears throat> so I'll just close out by saying um, that this concludes our presentation for this evening. And all of us at Vos Library, thank you for attending our Zoom with Vos Wednesday series since October of 2020. And we plan to resume this series in September of this year. Uh, with another fantastic lineup, but I'm so glad, Lorraine, you ended our session Aww, tonight. Thank so you. thank you so much, and I hope everybody has a wonderful summer. Great, so thank night, you. Be well and stay healthy, everybody. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye now.